Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss the pathology questions which came in the NEET year 2020. We will discuss the pathology questions in two parts. Now this is the first part. So first question related to the pathology which was seen in NEET PG 2020 was hepcidin inhibits what? So hepcidin, uh, what it inhibits is first choice was absorption of cobalamin, then transfer of iron into enterocytes folic acid synthesis and respiratory oxidase now the right answer to this question is transfer of iron into the enterocytes now you should know that hepcidin is involved in iron metabolism okay so iron metabolism hepcidin is involved in that and it inhibits the transfer of iron into the enterocytes so here you can see the hepcidin here inhibits the iron absorption so what all things you should remember about hepcidin uh, the related questions can also come so it is a type of acute phase reactant uh, like crp it is a acute phase reactant that means in a body where there is chronic inflammation going on you can see increase in hepcidin so in case of anemia of chronic disorder Okay, what will happen is hepcidin will increase because it is type of a acute phase reactant. So hepcidin will increase therefore it will not allow the iron to get absorbed and therefore the person will present as iron deficiency anemia in spite of having very good iron stores. Patient will have very good iron stores but presents with iron deficiency anemia. So hepcidin can be high in that person. Uh, and this, this is the reason behind the anemia of chronic disorder. What is its important in thalassemia? So in thalassemia, as you know, there, there in the patient, we give blood transfusion. So blood transfusion is there. There is iron overload in that person. So future uh, uh, developments are towards to find hep hepcidin agonist. So if we give patient hepcidin agonist, what will happen is the body will not absorb the excess iron. So this is the... Uh, uh, development in the thalassemia in iron deficiency anemia uh, they are uh, trying to in the person who uh, have high hepcidin level they are trying to give parenteral iron so that directly uh, parenteral iron is given and absorption will not be an issue so this is the hepcidin so the answer to this question hepcidin inhibits here it is very simple because uh, the choices are not near also so you should just know that it's uh, related to iron and it inhibits the transfer of iron into the enterocytes now going to the second question now second question is uh, 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 dependent on the microscopic picture so uh, just uh, listen a uh, 30 year old male came with complaints of swelling around the knee joint histopathological examination shows uh, many giant cells along with mononuclear cells what is the probable diagnosis so here you the key word which you should remember is giant cells okay and interspersed between the mononuclear cells so you have following options there is osteosarcoma ewing sarcoma giant cell tumor and chondrosarcoma so this uh, picture is very characteristic of giant cell tumor so if you uh, you see giant cells evenly spread giant cells along with the mononuclear cells this picture is very characteristic of giant cell tumor so here you can see this is the microscopic picture of the giant cell tumor you can see many giant cells okay this can also be used in the exam also now so giant cell giant cells are having multiple nuclei okay these are the giant cells and in between there are mononuclear cells so this picture is characteristic of giant cell tumor of the bone now this is the picture of Ewing sarcoma. The second option was Ewing sarcoma. So in Ewing sarcoma, it is a type of small blue round cell tumor. So uh, you can see multiple small small cells, and this is the uh, picture of Ewing sarcoma. In case of osteosarcoma, if you go to osteosarcoma, the option was osteosarcoma also given. In the osteosarcoma, what is the characteristic? If it comes in the exam, there is uh, osteoid production. You can see the pink pink matrix over here this is the osteoid along with the malignant cells you will have malignant cells which will produce osteoid 
सो दिस इज द करेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ ऑस्टियोसार्कोमा एंड द लास्ट ऑप्शन देयर वॉज कॉन्ड्रोसार्कोमा सो इन द कॉन्ड्रोसार्कोमा इन द पिक्चर यू कैन सी इट इज़ वेरी ब्लू इन कलर बिकॉज इट विल डिपॉजिट कॉन्ड्रॉयड मेट्रिक्स कॉन्ड्रॉयड मेट्रिक्स इज बींग डिपॉजिटेड यू विल हैव कॉन्ड्रॉयड मेट्रिक्स अलॉन्ग विद मैनी कॉन्ड्रोसाइड्स ओके कॉन्ड्रोसाइड्स आर इन द लेकुना इन द लेकुना दिस न्यूक्लियस दे विल बी मलिग्नेंट सो दिस इज द कॉन्ड्रोसार्कोमा सो इन द क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन वॉज वेरी सिंपल दैट इन द स्वेलिंग यू सी मैनी जॉइंट सेल्स अलॉन्ग विद मोनो न्यूक्लियर सेल्स सो दिस इज करेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ जॉइंट सेल ट्यूमर नॉट ऑफ ऑस्ट्रोसार्कोमा नॉट इविंग सार्कोमा नॉट कॉन्ड्रोसार्कोमा ओके नाउ इन द फर्दर एग्जामिनेशन मे बी दे कैन गिव यू पिक्चर ऑल्सो अलॉन्ग विद दैट ओके नाउ गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर सो क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर सेज द थर्टी टू ईयर फीमेल प्रेजेंट्स विथ थायरॉइड स्वेलिंग इन्वेस्टिगेशन शोज एलिवेटेड टी एस एच लेवल सो वट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाई एलिवेटेड टी एस एच लेवल इफ द टी एस एच लेवल आर हाई ऑफ द पर्सन दैट मीन्स द पर्सन सफर्स फ्रॉम हाइपो थायरॉइडिज्म and the post operative findings that means the biopsy or the fnac will sh is showing lymphocytic infiltration and herdel cells so what is the most probable diagnosis now here you can see the lymphocytes they are also not malignant herdel cells are also not malignant so these two follicular carcinoma and medullary carcinoma they go out of the picture okay uh, there is no description of any malignant cell Graves disease, it is hyperthyroidism. It is not hypothyroidism. So, if you even don't know the uh, microscopic appearance, then also the by exclusion, you can go to Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is also known as chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis. Lymphocytic thyroiditis or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or you have autoimmune thyroiditis. these all are at the all all the most same thing only so here you can see in this picture so these are this is your thyroid you can see colloid in the center okay this is a thyroid okay and this blue blue part this whole blue blue part these are the lymphocytes okay so this is the very characteristic picture of your hashimoto's thyroiditis it's appear as if it is lymph node in a thyroid gland so it is so much that of the lymphoid proliferation is there so lymphocytes in the thyroid gland along with few herdel cell herdel cell are not specific the specific part is the extensive lymphocytic infiltration of the thyroid gland herdel cell are nothing but thyroid follicular cells only having very high eosinophilic cytoplasm okay so here this area okay is pink pink area this is your few of the herdel cells so in the question if you see so uh, if you know it is lymphocytic infiltration along with herdel cell and diagnosis is hashimoto's thyroiditis now going to next question question number now 45 years old male uh, male uh, who is chronic smoker came to the clinic with a complaint of cough physician examines the patient takes the biopsy the picture in the biopsy is shown below what is the cellular changes which is happening in this patient so long story very short story uh, actually in the picture you can very clearly see this is one type of epithelium this is another type of epithelium okay change of one type of epithelium into another is known as metaplasia hyperplasia dysplasia syn3 so change of one type of epithelium into another type of epithelium is known as metaplasia and the answer here is metaplasia hyperplasia is the increase in the number of cells dysplasia is change in the nucleus you have uh, your uh, the nc ratio increases there hyperchromasia okay it is just prior to the carcinoma dysplas dysplasia and syn3 is your carcinoma in c2 so here there the it is just very clear you can see one epithelium that is your ciliated this is the cilia ciliated uh, pseudo stratified columnar epithelium going into squamous epithelium and the answer is metaplasia now going to the next question loss of food processes is classical in the case of so here uh, this is just a 
थोरेटिकल क्वेश्चन सो इन आई जी नेफ्रोपैथी एंड डायबिटिक नेफ्रोपैथी इफ यू कैन रिमेंबर द माइक्रोस्कोपिक देन देर इज नो लॉस ऑफ फूड प्रोसेस इज हेयर बट हेयर इन द सेगमेंटल एंड इन मेम्ब्रेनस यू सी लॉस ऑफ फूड प्रोसेस हाउ एवर इन सेगमेंटल ग्लोमेरोसिक्रोसिस यू हैव डिफ्यूज लॉस ऑफ फूड प्रोसेस in both your cyclorotic and non cyclorotic areas so therefore the answer here uh, is your segmental glomerulocyclorosis for this you have to remember the morphology of each and every glomerulopathy i have separate videos on that also you can see that on each nephropathy i have a separate video now question number 6 is uh, it's a very simple question which of the following factors play a major role in initiation of thrombus formation so in thrombus formation the options here given are vasoconstriction co coagulation cascade activation platelet activation and endothelial injury for this question you should remember your virchow's triad okay there is a virchow's triad in case of thrombosis there are three things which are important in formation of the thrombus okay you have endothelial injury okay the endothelium of the blood vessel should be injured abnormal blood flow should be there and hypercoagulability if these things are there the they cause thrombosis now in the choices you can see okay this vasoconstriction that's not important for us coagulation cascade activation that's not important for us platelet activation that is not important the thing is endothelial injury here the uh, if you don't remember the virchow's triad people used uh, uh, go for this choice coagulation cascade activation it appears like thrombosis it is related to that but you have to remember the virchow's triad we have three things your endothelial injury your abnormal blood flow okay and the hypercoagulability going to question number 7 screening is not use, uh, useful in the case of which carcinoma so you have multiple carcinomas which are given so here you can see which uh, it is asked which is not useful okay in carcinoma of the prostate if you remember uh, we use we used to do uh psa level okay digital rectal examination these is this is very uh, useful in carcinoma colon what uh, people go for is colonoscopy okay then occult blood testing in the feces okay a fecal dna testing these all are done for carcinoma colon in carcinoma breast very important self examination by the person itself then the mammography okay so these are very important test which are done for the screening but for the testicular carcinoma we don't have much screening okay apart from one or two markers which can be done screening is not useful in case of testicular carcinoma so the answer here is testicular carcinoma now going to question number 8 question number 8 uh, 20 years old male um, male presented with complain of swelling of the wrist for the last 2 years histopathological examination shows spindle shaped cells and verruque bodies what is the diagnosis so nowadays many question comes on the base of histopathological examination so there are certain pointers given over here so here the main pointer is the verruque bodies if you know earlier how the question was asked was verruque bodies are seen in okay nowadays long there is long story given and then there is one pointer given so you have to find out that pointer okay so verruque bodies are very characteristic of what uh, it is schwannoma okay now these both uh, neurofibroma and schwannoma do, do, both are a type of nerve sheath tumors but uh the difference is in schwannoma you see verruque bodies however in verruque bodies are not seen in neurofibroma so here in the picture what you can see is the verruque bodies so you have uh, this is the histopathological picture okay you can see there is one light area okay very eosinophilic area very pink pink area and then you have this area okay so this area is the a area this is known as antony a area this is the hypercellular area then you have antony b area which is the hypocellular area or the myxoid area 
okay so the this uh, formation of nuclei like this 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 okay like palisading this is known as the viruke bodies the antennae a areas are known as the viruke bodies so this is seen in case of your schwannoma and a very important schwannoma to know is the vestibular schwannoma which causes the deafness in the person also also known as acoustic neuroma so this is the schwannoma in the neurofibroma if, if the patient presents with neurofibroma what will be the history firstly it will be a painful swelling okay multiple painful swelling and there will be only spindle cells there will be no viruke bodies present going to question number 9 now question number 9 of 50 years old male presents with paresthesia uh, hemoglobin is low you can see it is 6.8 then peripheral blood smear shows macrocytosis okay one pointer and neutrophils with hypersegmented nuclei and endoscopy shows atrophic gastritis now the most probable diagnosis uh, the diagnosis over here is okay so what can it be it can be so here you can see uh, riboflavin deficiency no iron deficiency no so the problem is between the folate deficiency and the vitamin b12 deficiency because both folic acid deficiency and vitamin b12 deficiency they both lead to macrocytic anemia so here till here macrocytosis neutrophils hypersegmented nu uh, nuclei both things were going on but when you see atrophic gastritis that means that there has been certain deficiency of intrinsic factor which is leading to atrophic gastritis and this is only seen in vitamin b12 deficiency and not folic acid deficiency so therefore your answer will be vitamin b12 deficiency and not folic acid deficiency so the picture if you want to uh, this you can see these are the macrocytes okay these are big okay if you go for for the mcv in these it will be more than 101 femtoliter so it will be high so this is the macrocytosis and this is the hyper segmented nuclei other features which can be seen in the megaloblastic anemia they are hovel jolly bodies you have cabot rings you have basophilic stippling so these are all the other findings now going to last question question number 10 all trans retinoic acid is used in the treatment of tumor associated with now you should remember firstly uh, this is a pointer only okay it's a one word question so this etra etra is responsible as it is a vitamin a derivative and it is used in treatment of aml m3 that is the aml acute pro myelocytic leukemia so it is used in m3 variant and in m3 variant you have this mutation that is pml rara mutation okay so the pml rara mutation is seen in m3 okay so first you should know the etra is used in m3 that is the acute pro myelocytic leukemia and in that you have pml rara mutation so here yeah, this question is done so uh, if you to remember bcr abl mutation is very characteristically seen in cml then pml rara mutation is seen in acute promyelocytic leukemia cmic is seen in burkitt's lymphoma and here yeah, ce bpa is seen in uh, many aml okay now etra is the derivative of vitamin a and also you should remember in m3 variant one uh, important uh, there is one important complication which is also seen is dic okay so dic that is disseminated intravascular coagulation is seen in m3 variant because these promyelocyte they contain uh, some pro coagulant factors such as thromboplastin whenever there is uh, m3 so this is a very important complication this can also be asked in another mcq so this was all about the first part of the neat uh, pg 2020 discussion we will discuss the uh, other questions in the separate video uh, do ask your queries in the comment box uh, like share and subscribe to this channel if you like these videos i do have many theory uh, top uh, question uh, videos also on these topics if you want to study these topics in detail you can refer those videos i will link them thank you